hello. <laughs> uh, we know that God made me, you, us all special. The thinker, feeler, chooser, and our imagination. I'm just doing a little imagination in action today. Uh, yeah, sure good to be with you. Uh, my friends and I talk about imagination. <laughs> These are imaginary friends helping us learn about the most unimaginary friend that's ever been. The good news, Jesus himself. But anyway, um, yeah, we might go ahead and do that. We have good news. X marks the spot, plus in our lives is G. Thus, even in hard times. Okay, okay. I, I don't know if you could really tell what I was imagining in my actions today, but I was, I was thinking about three of our friends that we have met over the last couple, three weeks. Um, maybe some of you hadn't had a chance to meet them yet, but uh, these friends, that, just imagine, I'll just quickly reintroduce them. They help me think about a verse that we find in the story from the stories uh, that's filled with stories all meant to make a difference with the Bible. And so there's a verse in the Bible. Uh, you can look it up sometime, or if you need some help, mom, dad can help you look it up sometime. You can help them look it up sometime. I'm really glad you're here. Yeah, um, Isaiah, that's in the first part of the Bible, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. It says that those who wait or hope upon the Lord. Ribbit, ribbit, frog it, frog it. Fully rely on God. Frog it, frog it. Those who frog it, those who fully wait, hope upon the Lord. There you go, Roger will mount up on wings like Spocky, Spocky, eagle it here. I'm just learning to fly. That means I've been branching it. What's that mean? Well, as an eagle, we just get out of the nest and we start to kind of hop around the branches around till we get our wings nice and sturdy and strong and then we begin to flap and we begin to learn what it is to soar. You mean you soar like bison? Oh yes, I soar like bison, sometimes higher. When do you soar the highest? In the stormiest? Mount up on wings like eagles, flying high even in hard times. And then we will run and not get weary. We will walk and not get keep on, keeping on, keep on, keeping on. That's what Donnie does. If something real scary comes up, God gave me a shell. But I don't want to hide it from some good people, just some bad things. But that's another story. <laughs> keep on keeping on, keep on. Okay, that's it. That's it. Did you see it? Look at Isaiah 40, 31. Yes, we have good news, even in hard times. The good news is our Lord God is Jesus. And as we fully rely on Him, him, and he is able, even in the hardest of times, the stormiest of times, he's able to give us eagle's wings to be the best we can be, and then like that old turtle, just to keep on keeping on. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be kind of talking about today. Uh, as we get here soon to our friend that we've been, uh, if you've been with us the last couple of segments, you know we've been looking at a friend uh, out of a story, that has a story from the stories. Uh, in the scriptures that are meant to help us with our scriptures, the Bible. Um, in fact, I got to think about these may have been some critters he came across because he was a fisherman out on a lake a lot and around outside a lot. Maybe he came upon some frogs. And bald eagles didn't live over where he lived, but there was something called an imperial eagle that lived over where he lived. And uh, some turtles some warble turtles and some, maybe some other sort of turtles that lived over there. I'm not sure if he ever got this, but I know he studied Isaiah 
I don't know if you ever got that full meaning. Um, we're going to look at another story from his story today. Yeah, have you figured out who it is? Uh, some of you have. Uh, let me just quickly read off the names of those who have uh, indicated and shared with me. They got it. Caleb, Joanna, uh, Alicia, Hamilton, David, Karen, Braden, Corbin, Kale, and Kate. You say, well, wait a minute, I got it too. Did you? We'll go ahead and send it in because we're getting ready to do another story from his story. And um, uh, go ahead and send it in if you, if you do it. And uh, if we don't get it read today, uh, we'll make sure your name gets read next week. Again, if you're watching YouTube or whenever you might be watching this, may not have to do the week. I don't know. We have to be doing this on a Friday. And next week, as God gives us next week, we'll kind of do the same. Keep on keeping on pace. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, live. And then, of course, post it on Facebook and then with our Care Actor uh, YouTube channel. So, um, wait a minute. You remember what that good news, the core of it is? Jesus loves me, you, us all, no matter what. All right. Um, I'm going to step in this character that we've been uh, kind of acting out, pretending to be, and uh, one more time. And so I'll slip on this old storytelling robe and um, and into this character and uh, tell you another story from his story. An important story for us to learn right now in hard times. It was important for him to learn it. I'll slip this on. I'll pretend to be someone right out of the Bible. These guys know it was. Do you? All right. If you don't know or not, let's hear what we can hear to help us with our story. Okay. Some of you may have heard the story. I was arrested. For what? For believing the good news. For believing in Jesus and telling other people the good news. I mean, if you know good news, what are you going to do with it? Right. You want to tell it. I was telling. Uh, folks didn't like that so much, and so I was arrested. I put in jail. I might have been killed the next day. My friend, James, good friend, fishing friend, had been killed for just doing what I'd been doing. So what did I do that, that, <clears throat> as I was waiting in jail that day? Did I pace? Did I, did, did, did I scream and holler and get upset? I slept. I mean, I slept hard. How could I sleep in the middle of a storm? How could I sleep in the middle of hard times? Well, let me tell you how. I had learned to look at the good news more than the hard time. I didn't ignore the hard time. I was in a bad place. But there was someone there. Let me back up a little bit. <clears throat> and just quickly tell you some stories from my story. When I was just a kid, fishing with my dad and stuff, the scariest, hardest time for me as a kid, and then even as I grew to be a young adult, out there fishing was storms. I mean, where we fished on this lake that we fished in, you couldn't tell when they were coming. Sometimes they just whip up out of nowhere. Storms, fierce storms. I remember as a kid, my heart would pound and I'd get scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if I'd live to get back. I just didn't know. But, 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 but my dad was with me. And that would help. But then I was kind of the main fisherman. My brother and I, as long as dad helping us still some. And the storms come. I felt the same way as that little kid. Just looking around, didn't know if I was going to live, didn't know if I was going to get home. I didn't know. Fear, anxiety. It clouded everything. Even on bright sunny days, when I get ready to go fishing, sometimes I'd wonder, is the storm coming today? I would think more about the storm. And then he came along. Yeah, you know who. Jesus. We began to follow him. Started with a fishing story. Learned all kinds of things about Greatest and Least and all that. Let me tell you what I learned about storms. 
maybe I, I kind of thought once he was around, storms wouldn't bother us. <laughs> Whoa, was I wrong? One day he had a hard day. His family had given him a hard time, and so he said, "Let's get the boat and go to the other side." And when you know it, we got out in the middle of the lake that day, and one of those storms, one of those windstorms, huge! I mean, I'd been out there a lot of times. This was the fiercest one I could ever remember. I knew we were going to go down. I knew we were going to die. I knew this was it. And then I looked, I, I thought, where's Jesus at? And I saw he was in the back of the boat, sound asleep. Sleeping? How can he be sleeping? I remember going back with the other, Jesus, Jesus, don't you care? We're going to go down. He got up, got stripped the sleep out of himself, looked around a little bit and said, oh, you guys don't have a whole lot of trust and faith, do you? He just looked at the storm and said, hey, quiet. Looked like I learned my lesson, but I didn't. There was another day. It had been a great day. Fish and loaves multiplied over and over and over. Then he said he was going to go up the hill to pray. He did that lots, prayed. And he said, get in the boat and go to the other side. Okay. And so sure enough, we're going to the other side. You know what happened? In the middle of that night, don't you? Storm, huge storm. Again, <laughs> waves. And he wasn't in the boat anywhere, sleep or awake. He wasn't there. And I, all I could see was a storm. All I could, and anxiety and fear. I just all came around me. And then someone got worse because someone said, it's a ghost or something. Come right with the Mr. Death. I knew he was going to guess. I knew he was going to guess. And then I heard a voice, don't be afraid. It's me. It sounded just like him. And then I yelled out, if it's really you, let me come out to you. He said, come on out. But that was kind of dumb. In the middle of that storm, I put one foot over and one foot over, and I was standing on the water and went walking to him, walking to him, and my eyes were on him. It was okay, but then a big wave came up. The wind came up, and all I could see was the storm, and I began to sink like a rock. I knew that was going to be the end. I fought up to get one last breath, and as I did, he was still standing on top water just looking at me. He reached down from me. He grabbed a hold of me as I grabbed a hold of him. He pulled me to the top, helped me walk back to the boat. And as we got into the boat, the winds just settled down. One last storm I tell you about. Worst storm ever, and it wasn't on the water, it was on land. It's when he was arrested. He was taken away from us. He was beat on, spit on. It was horrible in that stormy time. All I could see was the storm. All I could see what was going on. I denied him. Yes, my best friend, I denied him. Not once, not twice, three times. Three times. And I ran. I deserted him. All I could see was the storm. And he was dead and gone. They nailed him on that cross. And he was gone. Gone. Anxiety, fear. Ate me alive. Until just like that day he walked to us on the water, he came back. You know the rest of the story, don't you? He didn't stay dead. He rose up, and there he was. Just like that day I was sinking the water. Said this time I was sinking in my, in me as a, in I, me, and my, my own selfishness, my own sinfulness. And there he was reaching out to me through the cross and through his life. And I put my life in his, and he grabbed a hold of me. He came into my boat. He came into my life. The lesson I've learned in all that, the storms are real, the hard times are real. If I look only at the storm, I get eat up by anxiety and fears. And I don't ignore that, but I make sure I remember to look at and know he who's in my boat in my life. And I'm able to have, have a rest inside, a peace. Even in the swirling storm, I don't know if I can explain it. So that day I was arrested. I knew I might die. There was all kinds of things swirling around. But I knew in that jail cell, he was with me. He said he'd always be with me. And I chose to keep my eyes on him, the good news. I chose to cast all my anxiety on him because I knew he cares for me. I wrote that in a little letter that God kind of prompts me to put together. Cast anxieties on him because he because he cares for us. Yeah, that's what I've learned about hard times. They're real. He's real hard. Good news, hard times. Storm's real. Don't make them the focus.
Those of you who didn't have it yet, did you get it that time? Huh? You did. Come on, go ahead and send it on in. Chose to begin to see you don't look at the storm, but you hope and look to him, which allows us to rise above and be the best we can be, even in the midst of the storm, and to keep on keeping on. That's what our friend learned. That's what I'm still learning. I've told you before, friends, because we're friends with friends. What we're doing here is more for me than anybody else. As all this is swirling around us right now with that pandemic and virus and joblessness and death, it seems for me just to look at the storm and get caught up in the hard times. And not that I'm to ignore that, but I get so caught up in what's the president saying? What's the news commentator saying? What's, what's my congressman saying? What's my governor saying? And I forget what he has said, the good news. He'll be with me always. That's what I have to fight to do. So pray for me that I'll do that. I'll pray for you that you do that. That um, we remember we have good news even in hard times. And let's make the good news our focus because we know he loves us. No. Pray for me, I'll pray for you. Let me pray for you right now. The storms are real. May we learn the lessons you taught our friend that we've looked at that allowed him to take a nap in the middle of a storm of possible death. In the middle of all this bad news, hard times, may we know that you, the risen Christ, who didn't stay dead. You're greater and you're in us and with us if we'll just let you be in us and with us. May we learn to look to you. Not ignore the storm, but not make that our main focus. Hope in you. Mount up on wings like eagles. Frog it, frog it. Wings like eagles and we'll keep on keeping on. Pray that for me. I pray that for my dear friends watching today. We pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Whoop. We haven't got our hugs yet today, have we? Let's let's close with a hug. Okay, give yourself a hug. Great big one. Ah, okay, okay, that's from me to you. Okay, I'm I'm giving myself one. Just imagine that's from you to me. Okay, and then and then just for a moment, keep giving that hug and imagine that's Jesus. That's the good news right there with you. And he's hugging you, he's loving you just like a good shepherd. I'm doing the same doesn't make the storm all go away, but it gives us hope and eagle's wings in the midst of